the reading out of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. I want to talk for a little bit about a, the power of a transformed mind. The power of a transformed mind. As we look at this particular text, the apostle makes a passionate appeal and bases it on the strength of God's mercy, a mercy that displays the wonderful quality of God that moved him to provide us an escape from the consequences of sin. This same mercy now serves as leverage for this appeal. And what is the, the appeal? To be not conformed to this world. In other words, resist the temptation to embrace the attitudes and actions of this world. Now that in itself is a tremendous challenge, but then he goes on to say, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And a transformed mind, my brothers and sisters, is simply this. A transformed mind is a mind that is no longer influenced or swayed by the opinions of men, nor the ways of the world. God requires a devotion from us that can express itself in not only a transformed mind, but a transformed life. A life that no longer reacts to the world, but realigns itself and reconciles itself unto the will of God. For there is no other way we can ensure God's will is being executed in us unless we react, realign, and reconcile. Conforming to the world and its opinions is irrelevant because all it does is cause men to become vain in their imaginations and foolish in their hearts as their hearts are darkened. Even when we look at the transliterated meaning for conform, the Greek root word is schema, which means fashion. Listen, don't let yourself get caught up with what the world labels as fashionable. You hear it all the time. Hey, that's in fashion. That's not in fashion. Clothing, I found, is one of the biggest areas that we hear the label fashionable. And yet the reality is that clothing may be in fashion one day, and the next day can be out of fashion. I know that for a fact because clothing was my weakness. You know, what I eventually found out, you can never expect to keep up with fashions without paying a steep price. Why? Because fashions are constantly changing. That's why Paul said it this way in 1 Corinthians, the fashion of this world passeth away. Now, don't get me wrong. I still like nice things. I still like a nice wardrobe. But now... I seek after that which is more practical, those items that can stand the test of time. That's the power of our spiritual vitamin and the message in our spiritual vitamin to be not conformed to those things that are fashionable, but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind, focusing on those things that are no longer fashionable, but those things that are practical that are not only practical, but have the ability to last. God bless you, Carla. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, how you doing? How are you? I'm fine. Praise God. Um, I'm calling because I heard you speak about um, when you first started in the ministry and how you was didn't have the education and didn't go to the school that you wanted to go to. But yes. Counterparts was all in school. Exactly. And, and they yeah. had the knowledge. Yes. And the scripture that God gave me was trust the Lord with all my heart and That's lean right. not to their own understanding. That's right. And all that ways to acknowledge him that he shall direct their path. And he has. And another thing is that because I've been laying for the Lord, I want to go to school. That's all I want to do yeah. is go to school. But the path that he has been taking me on is by education my, myself on the things that he needed for me to know. Yeah. And these are the things that the mind has an attitude of what God needs us to bring and also to be educated for ourselves. And you know, and, and, and that does, and I don't want people to misconstrue those thoughts of mine. It's not that I have anything against education because I love education. I'm an educated so man. I, yeah. Okay. You know, I've I've got I've got a degree. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's mm -hmm. not it's not in theology, but I've got a degree. Mm -hmm. Uh but but uh and because of my sensitivity to the importance of education 
once I accepted the call and said, okay, Lord, I'm ready. I'll go. I'll do it. Uh The first thing, of course, naturally is, well, I need to get some formal training. Uh Uh, But God was not releasing me in that area because he had so much in front of me that I was addressing that there was no way I could see a classroom fitting Mm -hmm. in Mm -hmm. so then of course then i'm perplexed i'm like lord now i I believe you called me to this but now i can't even uh, make myself available to the formal training necessary to equip me in this and he said the only equipping you need is from me and there will be a day when i'll allow you to go do that part but until that day just trust me